What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy Dylan, and uh, I'm making this video. Um, you know, it's another pre draft video because uh, obviously that's the big thing coming up. There's a possibility we might not even have an NFL season, so there's always that. Um, obviously, not. Uh, you know for sure yet there's still several months to go but OTAs are you know suspended indefinitely um, and obviously the draft is going to be entirely virtual at this point etc etc so we'll have to wait and see um, but you know the draft is the big thing obviously the big storylines right now uh, as far as the Dolphins and the NFL in general um, obviously the NFL in general is the uh, you know pandemic going on and how that's affecting the NFL and then of course uh, in regard or in relation to the Dolphins there's that but also you know free agency um, and everything that they've done in free agency that time is over um, essentially I mean you know we, there's no expected, you know, moves really to be made. Uh, you know, teams might do some, you know, minor things uh, here and there, but for the most part, it's over until after the draft and you hit the second wave of free agency. So the big thing now is the draft, and there was this uh, good article that I read from Adam Beasley of the Miami Herald. Now I disagree with some things uh, in there, but we'll we'll talk about that as we go. Um, but he gave some scenarios, um, some different scenarios, some different hypotheticals in which the Dolphins could do some trading. Now, as you guys know, I fully expect the Dolphins to trade. I, uh, as time, I, well, I started off believing that they were going to trade up to the number three pick with the Detroit Lions to take Tua Tagovailoa. That's still a substantial possibility. And obviously, it depends on how other things play out. Um, you know, are the Bengals willing to trade down to the number fifth pick? Uh, and are the Dolphins willing to give them what they ask for, et cetera, et cetera. So, and not to mention other teams that could possibly trade up, blah, 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 blah. All kinds of different things could happen. Um, and, but I have as time has gone on the more information that i've gathered the more articles i've read the more opinions the more data i've gathered so on and so forth i now believe that the dolphins are going to trade up to the number one pick the first overall pick and take joe burrow um and so we'll have to see but there's some good there's some good uh information in here and there are some good scenarios to look at so let's get into it and, and what he had to say we have long believed that the odds of the Dolphins actually trading for the draft's first overall pick are long. Well, I don't know who he means. This will be the first disagreement because I don't know who he means by we. I have, as I just told you, my early predictions were that they were going to trade up to the number three overall pick. Um, but of course, there's still possibilities they could stay at five or trade back. All of those things are possible. All of these different scenarios are possible. I believe that the likelihood of them trading uh, up is far greater than staying put or trading down. And at this point, I think that they're more likely to trade to the number one pick to take Joe Burrow than they are to the number three pick or somewhere, you know, in between them and the number one pick to get Tua or Herbert or what have you. Um, so I've thought for quite some time, though, that it was a certainly a possibility, a distinct possibility, a substantial possibility. It wasn't where I had always leaned in my personal predictions. Uh, I have evolved a little bit more towards that side or certainly more towards that side as time has gone on. But it was absolutely on the table, absolutely on the table. The entire season was tanking to get the number one spot and then they miraculously won five games but as i've said it was more trying to have their cake and eat it too trying to dispel the notion that they tanked which is ridiculous because again all of the fundamental key uh, uh proponents of tanking were implemented i.e strip your team down get rid of the talent etc etc trade people away accumulate draft capital and cap space and then subsequently they blew through that cap space to fill uh, f uh spots in free agency overpaid for players as i thought they would etc etc so all of this is not 
It was never a long shot, never, ever a long shot that they could trade up to the number one pick. It was a st substantial possibility. And again, while I didn't always think that's where they were going to go, I certainly do now. All right, here's, but he says two major reasons. The Bengals probably want Joe Burrow, the draft's best quarterback. So there's a couple things wrong with that. First of all, he says probably want Joe Burrow. I think that almost every team in the league, uh, minus like, you know, the Chiefs, whatever, a couple teams, uh, the Ravens, who have quarterbacks that they certainly trust and, and believe are their guys, uh, almost every other team would want Joe Burrow. So it probably want, well, you don't sound very confident in your own assessment. That's part of it. Like, if you think that one of the major reasons why the Bengals wouldn't do it is because they probably want him, well, that's not very convincing. Uh, but any team would probably want him. It's whether or not they feel like what they can get in return for that number one pick is worth it. And can they still, you know, if they really do want a quarterback, can they still get a top guy? And at five, they certainly could still get a top guy or trade up again. Um, two, even if Cincinnati, Cincinnati is open to a deal, would, they, would the cost to Miami be prohibitive? Now, that's a good legitimate question. Uh, you know... Are the Dolphins willing to give whatever it is that the Bengals are asking for? The Bengals are obviously going to ask for something substantial if they were to get rid of that first overall pick, which gives them the ability to take whoever they want. One, because it's a super valuable pick to begin with, but two, because they know the underlying reasons for it. They know that Miami is desperate, etc., etc. So, and they know that we literally set ourselves up for this all of last year and including with the the moves that they did in the offseason so they 100 percent set themselves up for this not only that but then there's also going to be competition for the number two and the number three pick the number four pick with other teams trying to move up to get quarterbacks so the cincinnati uh, Bengals are going to ask for a king's ransom the question it, it, it in these conversations right because i imagine these conversations are being had Right? I can't imagine that the Dolphins and the Bengals haven't or won't talk about it at all. So in these conversations, the Bengals are going to ask for a King's Ransom. The question is, is whether or not the Dolphins are desperate slash foolish enough to do that. I believe that they are, and I believe that that is what they will do. Um, but so that one is a good question. Uh, enough time has been spent on point number one. Let's focus on point number two. We don't know for certain what it will take to get the Bengals to move down, but NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah floated a scenario that has been discussed with Armando Salguero on our podcast. And just to be clear, I think that almost all the scenarios that they talk about, but in my perspective, trading up at all is not a good deal. Again, you guys know my philosophy. I would never take a quarterback in rounds one or two. I would take one every single year in round three or later, depending on... Uh, the level of need. I would use those higher picks to fill out the entire roster and get the best talent available. Um, you know, I would never chase a quarterback. I would never trade up to get one. I wouldn't even trade up to, to pick a player almost ever. My general philosophy would be trade back, accumulate more capital and take more chances and draft, um, you know, more comfortably without a ton of pressure and and draft smart right instead of you know feeling the need to oh well i just have to fill this one spot that's why i don't believe in the all you need is a quarterback philosophy because then it unreasonably drives people to 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 reach and to to give up more than they should etc cetera, etc cetera. anyway but here's what he said i don't think cincinnati will trade uh first pick but let's have some fun here I think this is absolutely ridiculous uh, if they were to do something like this. But this is what he says. Miami trades the number fifth overall pick. Okay, so that's our first first rounder. The 39th overall pick, which is our first second rounder. And 141st overall, which I believe is a late fourth rounder. I think they mentioned that in here. Okay, so... The first of our first rounds, the first of our second, and a late fourth rounder, plus a 2021 second rounder to the Lions, okay, for pick number three. So they give away uh, four picks in total, 
one first, one second, and a fourth from this year, and a second from next year to get just the number three overall pick. Now that might that might um, work out as far as like the the value chart goes. It might be a fair trade in that regard, but you have to. You, you have to take into consideration that like let's say they were to do that trade and then pick there they would only have that one pick instead of those four picks so it makes the the pressure for getting that one pick far far higher especially considering the fact that you moved up and now you know he's uh being picked that player is being picked higher you're gonna have to pay them more they're expected to do a lot more etc 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 whereas you could just pick four guys with those uh four picks that you have all of which would be substantially cheaper than that number three overall pick etc 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 so but then then he has them trade that three that number three overall pick to the Bengals for the first overall pick for not just the third the the third overall pick but then also our 18th overall pick from this year so another first round pick from this year a 2021 first round pick so one of our first round picks from next year for the number one overall pick so Miami would have in 2020 the number one overall pick the number 26th overall pick and the number 56th overall pick so well we would consolidate i mean that's it's crazy it's absolutely crazy we would lose the the fifth overall pick would essentially morph into the first overall pick but we'd also lose the the 18th overall pick from this year a first round one of our first rounds from next year the 56th overall pick from this year, a fourth round pick from this year, a second round pick from next year. I mean, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Yeah, and then he notes they still have a first and second round pick in 2021. Yes, but that is so much that you give away because essentially you're getting one pick out of all of that. After all of that, you were getting just the number one pick and you would have given away in the process the, th the third overall pick, the fifth overall pick, the 39th overall pick, the 141st overall pick, a 2021 first rounder and a 2021 second rounder. That's absurd. That's absurd. Why would anyway, anyway. A three-way trade in which the Dolphins get the first pick, the Bengals the third, and the Lions the fifth. Obviously, both Cincinnati and Detroit would want additional compensation from Miami. Here are the terms of his fantasy trade. The Dolphins get pick number one. That's it. They get the first overall pick this year. The Bengals would get picks number three, 18, and a 2021 first round pick from the Dolphins. So even if you don't count the third overall pick because we only acquired that in the trade with the Lions, the Dolphins lose their eight. So far, they've lost their 18th overall pick and one of our 2021 first rounders. The Lions will get picks number five. So we lose that 39th overall. So they lose that. That's our first of two second round picks this year. 141. So there's a late fourth rounder from this year and a 2021 second round pick from the Dolphins next year. Why would you give up all that? That leaves Chris Greer picks number one, 26, 56, and 70 in the first two days of the 2020 draft. Okay, so that's one, 26, 56, and 70, but they could have had five, 18, 26, 39, 56, 70, uh, 141, I mean, anyway, I, like I just, I don't get it. It does, none of that makes sense to me. And there are so many instances in which the, which not just the Dolphins, but teams in the NFL chase players, most notably quarterbacks, and then it fails. Not to mention, not to mention just the, the lackluster percentage of success from first round picks in general. 
first round picks often, far more often than not, end up becoming either busts or just average in the NFL for a number of reasons. Injuries could derail uh, their their careers. They could go to a shit team. Maybe they have off, uh, off the field issues. There are so many things that derail prospects and it's just absurd. Anyway, and it gives him Joe Burrow. Okay, well, I, I mean, but uh, let's continue on. And if they're lucky, if they're lucky, a tackle such as Georgia's Andrew Thomas at pick 26 and a running back such as Ohio State's J.K. Dobbins at 56. They might have to trade up 10 or so spots for Dobbins. So let's stop right there. So first of all, he admits that they have to get extremely lucky. I doubt that Andrew Thomas, one of the top offensive line prospects in this draft, would be at 26. I, I find it unimaginable that it would take 26 picks, even with a run of quarterbacks in the top five, potentially, or certainly in the top 10, um, you know, Chase Young and Isaiah Simmons and Jeffrey Okuda and a bunch of other guys that are going to be there. But I can't imagine that no team would take like one of the top two offensive linemen until 26. And then they think that like one of the top three at worst, running backs is then going to fall to number 56 overall. Uh, maybe, but there's certainly a lot of potential that that's not going to happen, that he'll get picked sooner. But then he even mentions they might have to trade up 10 or so spots in that. So not only would they get rid of all those picks, yes, they would get Joe Burrow, but they would substantially deplete the amount of picks that they have, including several first rounders, um, a, you know, a second rounder, a fourth rounder, get rid of all those picks, including a bunch of high picks. You get your coveted um, quarterback, but you don't have any kind of guarantee that you're going to have an offensive line for him or a running game for him. Uh, you don't know that these uh, free agents that you signed on defense are gonna are going to make your defense the the caliber that you want and expect, and then you are gonna hope to get lucky to get Andrew Thomas at 26, and then you might have to trade away even more draft capital to move up to go get J.K. Dobbins because he doesn't seem to think that Dobbins will be there at 56. And they might have to trade up 10 or so spots to get him. So that means they would have to trade away even more draft capital, deplete their draft capital even more, to move up 10 spots or so to 46 or so to then go get Dobbins. Why would you do that? It just... Okay. But what if they're not lucky? Which I think is far more likely. A trade up to one would of course give them the rights to any player they want, but would also severely limit their ability to fill their many remaining needs. The scenarios he just gave would uh, severely deplete them in their ability to fulfill their remaining needs because they get rid of a ton of their opportunities to do so. A bunch of them. They gave away like six picks in just the previous scenario including multiple first round picks both this year and next year okay dude but let's continue on don't take our word for it run the simulation yourself as we did on pro football focuses mock draft simulator okay i mean like i said their previous scenario uh would you know drastically deplete them but so would he actually he is right though that so would or he didn't say this, I'm saying the so part, so would um, trading straight up to the number one pick. Either way, because look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they do this weird, janky, let's trade up to the number three just so we can trade up to the number one uh, scenario. It doesn't matter either way. They're, the Dolphins are going to have to give away substantial amounts of capital to make any of these trades. And it'll probably actually have to be more than what the, um, the the value chart would suggest is an even trade because of the level of desperation that these teams know the Dolphins have and with the competition for other teams to take 
uh, some of these quarterbacks. The Lions could take a quarterback. The Redskins could take a quarterback, or maybe they trade to the Chargers or the Panthers or somebody that could trade up to go get a quarterback. Lots of these things are going to be there, and those are going to be bargaining chips on the table that work against the Dolphins. The Dolphins lose leverage because of those factors, which means the Dolphins are going to have to give up more. So no matter what, they are going to have to deplete their, their reservoir of draft capital to be able to make any of these trades. We negotiated a straight up Dolphins Bengals trade for the number one pick. To make it work, it cost Greer picks number five, 18, 56 this year, plus a first and second round pick in 2021. Okay, but let's look, how is that different? Because in the other scenario, in their little roundabout way to do it, they still gave away the fifth pick, they still gave away the 18th pick, they still gave away the 56th overall pick. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They actually gave away the 39th overall pick, which it would be worse, which would be worse than the 56th overall pick, obviously. Okay. And then they also gave away a fourth rounder. So trading up in this scenario, and then and then they also gave away a 2021 first and second round pick in that previous scenario. So they actually give in this scenario to trade straight up to the number one pick, they actually give away less. In this pick, in this scenario, they get the number one pick, but give up the fifth, the 18th, the 56th, a first round in 2021, and a second round in 2021. In the previous scenario, they gave away, uh, they gave away the fifth, the 18th, the 39th, the 141st overall, a 2021 first rounder, and a 2021 second rounder. So what, what, what he's trying to argue here that trading straight up to the number one pick would cost them more and it would be less wise. Yet the scenario that him and Daniel Jeremiah uh, outlined prior to that is more picks, better picks, and more picks overall, including a lot of the same picks and one or two picks is better than some of the other ones. It's a worse scenario. And then it, it, both scenarios still require you to, to have tremendous amount of, amounts of luck, like hoping that Andrew Thomas falls all the way uh, to the 26th pick. Or that, you know, you can get J.K. Dobbins at fucking whatever. I, I mean, it's, it's... Okay, let's continue on. The absurdity is not done. That's not far off from the total compensation required in Jeremiah's proposed three-way swap. Okay, at least he acknowledges that, so that's good. And it's actually a pretty fair deal. I mean, that depends on your perspective and what you consider to be a fair deal. I don't think it's a fair deal for the Dolphins. I think it's uh, an absurdly fair deal for the Bengals. And in fact, in the previous scenario, I think it would be absurdly fair deals for both the uh, Detroit Lions and the Bengals in the in that scenario, and the Dolphins would have to give up even more. So if the Dolphins were to do this ridiculous three-way swap, or this swap to move up to three, then move up to one, that would be even more foolish than just trading straight up to the number one pick. Uh, let's see. And it's actually a pretty fair deal according to the simulator, which found the Dolphins would win that trade 68% of the time. Okay, but that's based off of the value of those picks, right? So the numerical value that those picks represent, right? Like like the number one pick, I think, is like 3,000 overall points. And then there's like a, you know, a prorated fucking way that it scales down based off of, um, you know, whatever pick it is, right? And then you add up certain picks to try and get the number of value for whatever pick you're trading for, right? And so in that regard, it might be an even trade. Although again, as I mentioned, the Dolphins would likely have to give away more in terms of value in, in that terms of value, right? So when it comes to just the, 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 the point value for these picks, the Dolphins actually have to get, might have to, because of those previous factors, other teams wanting to trade up, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so, um, so there's that. 
But that doesn't take into account then the fact that because it's when you look at it from the perspective of, well, the Dolphins get one pick and they give away like six picks. It's certainly not fair when you look at it in that framing because you gave away six picks to get one. Sure, that pick, uh, the, the, the value, the point value might be similar, but you only get the one pick. And if you fuck up on that one pick, well, you don't have those five other attempts to try and mitigate that you only have that one okay so from that perspective not only that but then you look at it from a financial perspective that one that first overall pick the salary that that guy has to make is going to be more than the salaries combined of most of those picks maybe not all of them right so like the number one pick probably will make more than um you know the um second rounders the fourth rounder uh and a couple of the 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 first rounders combined or one or two of the first rounders combined right so in that regard it's not a fair trade either like it's not i don't understand why people get this idea that trading up is a fair trade for the person for the team trading up it's not in almost all forms and fashions unless the tremendous risk that you are taking to do so pays off in like a massively tremendous way. Like you're constantly going to the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. But that doesn't happen very often. The chances that uh, chances of that are exceptionally slim. So that leaves out very, very important contextual data and information that is um, necessary for evaluating whether or not it is actually a fair trade. The point value um comparison is not all right like it's not the whole picture you can't just say well we we package together six picks that are worth roughly three thousand uh points in value to trade up to the number one pick and uh that's totally fair it's not it, the the it's only fair roughly in the point value based off of the the value chart but it's not fair in so many other ways. Anyway, on this imaginary draft night, Greer wastes no time zooming in the name Joe Burrow to New York, but then the reality of the situation sinks in. The Dolphins still need a tackle, and unless they are willing to trade up again, which in that very first scenario they suggested they would have to do for J.K. Dobbins, and they're, I think, crazy to think that Andrew Thomas is going to fall to 26, which means that in either one of these scenarios, they would likely have to trade up again to get Andrew Thomas or one of the top offensive linemen. But again, this is why, this is why, um, real quick, last year in their draft, I would have done things totally different. Of course, I would have kept Ryan Tannehill. I would have kept Laramie Tunsil and, and Juwan James, et cetera, et cetera. But then I would have instead of drafting christian i would not have traded for josh rosen and kept that second round pick instead of instead of drafting christian wilkins um in the first round when they did especially considering there considering there was a run on the top talent on the uh defensive line before they got to the dolphins um they could have taken Garrett Bradbury or one of the other top offensive line prospects. And then they could have kept their second round pick. They could have picked, you know, a defensive lineman there. One that was more worthy of taking in the second round. Because look, Christian Wilkins didn't play to a first round status in his first year. He would have, if they would have taken him or somebody, if they would have taken him, for example, in the second round, which is possible because there was a run on all the top talent of the defensive linemen in the first round the dolphins reached for him at at, what, at their pick uh to get him so they could have got him potentially in the second or more uh, uh, a more second round caliber guy he played maybe to a second round status so that would have been a better value and then they could have but they could have gotten you know a uh, defensive lineman in round two and then they could have gotten quarterback will greer uh, to groom up behind Ryan Tannehill, who just went to the AFC Championship game this past season with the Tennessee Titans. 
I didn't predict specifically that, but I did predict that he was going to take over from Marcus Mariota and become their, you know, franchise guy and then do great things with them. So I was right about that. Anyway, in this simulation, um, the Dolphins are left to pick from the best remaining wide receivers, which is like their deepest position on the entire team, corners and edge defenders. And frankly, on paper, those are all the weakest, or I mean, the strongest areas on the team as of right now on paper because of the signings that they have. Corner, I mean, you, you know, theoretically have Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, and uh, Bobby McCain, um, and a couple other guys in there like Nick Needham, right? That could potentially be a good guy there for you. Eric Rowe can do some things that, you know, whatever. So you have a, a relatively on paper strong secondary. So you don't need them. Wide receivers, you have Devontae Parker, Jakeem Grant. Uh, 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 God damn it. Albert Wilson, um, Preston Williams. You got all, uh, all these guys, right? You got all these guys. Um, and so you don't really, and there's a bunch of other guys on the team too right they have like 11 wide receivers or some shit right now on the team so they have tons of guys there edge defenders i mean we certainly need help in the pass rush department but they just signed shaq lawson and kyle van noy to big contracts right so um and then of course they still have the former first round pick taco charlton the former first round pick charles harris right so i mean if you're left at taking from those positions, that's not a good place to be because if you pick players at those positions, they're like the least, uh, you know, biggest need. The least biggest need. That's the smallest need. Like, it's, anyway. Anyway, so let's continue on. Of which there are plenty because the top tackles are gone. So with the 26th pick, the Dolphins take Clemson corner A.J. Terrell, who on the plus side rounds out the best secondary in the NFL. Potentially, on paper. You don't know how Xavier Howard's knees are going to hold up. You don't know if he's going to get suspended yet or not for any amount of games because of his off-the-field issues. Um, etc, etc. He's getting older. He's in his uh, later 20s now, right? So his, his, his health issues are only going to get um, potentially worse as he continues to go through more uh, football and get, you know, beat up and bruised more from playing. Um, and then Byron Jones, I mean, there's nothing to say that he's as elite as his contract would suggest. But okay, um, you still have some pretty significant question marks at safety. Um, so I, I don't know that you have anywhere near enough data to say that they have the best, even if you get AJ Terrell, which again would be a wasted pick because you could use that pick on the 26th overall pick, a first rounder. You could use that on an area of need that's far um, more important. And if you actually you know, prioritize this properly, then you can get the top talent at the areas of need instead of, you know, neglecting it and pushing it further down the draft, etc., etc. The Dolphins in this alternate reality end up with two really good players, but do nothing to address their biggest need offensive tackle. And that's a huge, that would be a huge mistake huge mistake the dolphins are not in a luxurious position of being able to just you know uh comfortably take whoever they want or take best player available like for instance the titans are they don't have a lot of picks but they can just take whoever the best player available is because they don't really have a lot of needs the dolphins have immense needs across the entire team even with the the uh players they picked up in free agency because you still need depth. You don't know if these players are going to get hurt or they might not live up to what you, you know, expect from them, etc., etc. That's why a more likely and then if you don't if you neglect your offensive line, then that prize quarterback that you go get, who they will most likely throw in the fire uh because while well, they traded up to go get him and he's their shiny new toy, etc., etc. Well, if he just gets beat up the whole time, then congratulations. Anyway, that's why a more likely scenario in the real world is the Dolphins staying put at five. I, again, I don't know where it's certainly a possibility, 
that the Dolphins could stay at number five. Again, it's a possibility that they trade down in the draft instead of staying put at number five or trading up. But the data that we have available to us, everything they did last year, everything they did this off season, um, you know, the draft capital that they have accumulated, blah, 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 blah. Every data point that we have suggests that they are um, going to trade up. So I don't know why he thinks that the more likely scenario in the real world is the Dolphins stay put at five. That's just not true. Is it possible? Yes. If it happens, it would be um, a shocker to the probability because the likelihood, the statistical probability based off of all of the factors that we have computes to them trading up. So it would be a shocker. It's not impossible and there is a, still a chance that that can happen. And it depends on a lot of other things. But it is certainly not the more likely scenario. Anyway, that's why he says that's why a more likely scenario in the wor real world is the Dolphins staying put at five and building a complete team around either Justin Herbert or Tua Tagovailoa. I would say again, I still wouldn't take a quarterback in, fir in the first or second round, blah blah blah. But that would be the smarter. Um, scenario than any of these trade up salute uh situations in one of the simulations we ran the dolphins landed herbert at five thomas at 18 and Lu uh, louisville tackle makai becton at 26 landing their franchise quarterback and his two bookend linemen okay couple things there again that's far better than any of those trade up scenarios a million times better although still not exactly how i would do it because I wouldn't take the quarterback in round one. I would find one. I would find one in a later round. At this point, because I do think it is a substantial need, I would take one in round three. Um, and then I would have Ryan Fitzpatrick and Josh Rosen and uh, I, Jake Rudiker. I think it is. I, I forgot who the other guy is on the roster. You would have plenty of guys, and it's better to sit your 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 guy for your your uh, draft pick. For a year let him redshirt let him adjust to the nfl let him learn the playbook let him get used to his guys etc etc let him learn from the veteran guys right um so that's how i would do that but this scenario is still far better and you do um i would say adequately address the offensive line because then you you do have eric flowers who i think is going to be overpaid and not play as well as they hope uh and ted Karras, i thought was a a solid contract Although I would have paid the center more than I would have paid the guard, considering that I think that the tackles and the center are the more important positions than the two guard positions. Um, but then if you throw Makai Becton and uh, Andrew Thomas in to that mix, well then you actually could have a pretty substantial uh, offensive line and actually could potentially have a really good offensive line. I mean, you're getting at that point two of the top like five offensive linemen and two of which not till the 18th and 26th picks. Now, I don't know that those guys are going to last that long, even in this scenario, but, I mean, they ran it through a mock draft simulator, so I suppose it is possible. Or, I mean, it's certainly possible. I don't know if that's going to play out that way. Um, but, again, this is certainly far better than the trade-up scenarios. Some news. It's seemingly less and less likely that the Dolphins will move up to draft Taga Bailoa. And that's part of why I think that they are actually going to go for Burrow. Because I do think that they do have concerns over, over his injuries. And I would like to think that they are smarter, especially considering their doctors are not capable. And that could be really be it, honestly. It could just simply be because their doctors are not able to. All of the reports have been absolutely glowing, right? So if they just, you know, took the word of Tagovailoa and his representatives, et cetera, et cetera, um, and even the NFL doctors at the at the combine, et cetera, et cetera, then, um, you know they could be like yeah we don't have any concerns and it's not a big deal but maybe they do and it could be just simply because their guy didn't get to take a look at him who knows right those are things that we don't know but that is something i have taken into consideration and part of the reason why i think they will trade up for joe burrow he's the heisman trophy winner he he uh put up record setting numbers this past year um uh you know he's got a lot of the physical traits uh blah 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 right um, and he doesn't have the injury history. So uh, 
huge, pretty substantial difference in that regard at the very least. A lot of people still think that Tua is the better athlete and quarterback overall. That may be true, but it is very possible that Burrow will have the longer and more successful career um, just because of that injury uh, history or lack thereof. Anyway, but, but for the sake of argument, here's what it would likely take to get to number three and take Tagovailoa. Picks number five, 26, and 39. Still a terrible trade for the Dolphins in my opinion. That would leave the Dolphins uh, picks number 3 and 18, which means the Dolphins would land Tagovailoa and a tackle such as Houston's Josh Jones, who would help the Dolphins more in 2020 than the late first round corner and edge defender they would take after trading up for Burrow. One more hypothetical. What if the Dolphins miss out on Herbert and have deep reservations about Taiga Vailoa or vice versa? Or what if they actually like Jordan Love more than either of them? There's a way to get a top three talent and their franchise quarterback and it only costs them an additional second round pick. Also, the fact that he keeps calling any of, guys, any of these guys their franchise quarterback well, partly proves my point, but uh, and that is that you don't know. You don't know right like in each of these scenarios in the scenarios where they take burrow he calls him their franchise guy that's assuming that he becomes that right and that's assuming everything goes right in the si situation where they take tua he's their franchise guy you don't know that it's going to work out to that to that you know hope right you just don't know that so continuing to and or or any of these guys that get picked on other teams because we can't we can't take all of them, right? They might not become franchise quarterbacks, at least to the um, to the to the status and level that we hype franchise quarterbacks or define how we define franchise quarterbacks now. Um, they might just flat out might not. Tua could go somewhere else, and his injury history could be too much even on a good team, right? So he could still get injured and end his career early because of it. So they might not become franchise quarterbacks. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Uh, and it only cost them an additional second round pick. Take Isaiah Simmons, the do everything defender out of Clemson at five, trade up to pick number 10, sending the Browns the 18th and 39th overall picks and take Love, the dynamic but inconsistent Utah State quarterback and do what's necessary to land Becton or Thomas with their third first round pick. A move up to 26 to 20 would probably ju take just Miami's third round pick. I mean, still though, so much, it's, Again, man, I just, it, there's almost no situation in which I can personally justify trading up for players because there's, you give away, even, again, the, the, whether or not the um, value chart uh, calculations make it add up, that's irrelevant because you're still giving away more picks for less picks it still puts a ton more pressure on that on those less picks to get them right there's and then when you do pick those guys there are so many things that can go wrong again off the field issues injury issues the 2020 season not even being a thing because of uh you know the coronavirus like i mean it's it's too risky. It's just too risky to me. The Dolphins in this scenario would still have a late second rounder and could use that pick on a running back such as Florida State's Cam Akers. Simmons, Love, Becton, and Akers, or Burrow, Thomas, and Dobbins. But, I mean, even in that situation where he says Burrow, Thomas, and Dobbins, I mean, a lot of people would probably say, yeah, let's take that scenario. But there's no guarantee that that would be the scenario. If they traded away all that draft capital to go get Burrow, they might get Burrow. But then they might not get Thomas because he gets picked before uh, whatever it is, the 26th pick that they still have. He, pro he likely will not fall that far. Or then they would have to trade away more to go up and get him. Or in their in their scenario, they would have to potentially trade up to go get Dobbins. So then you trade away even more draft capital. It just, it's nonsensical. It's illogical. It's irrational. It doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, but simply off a of talent and, 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 you know, perspective, 
I'm sure a lot of people would probably take that. Anyway, what package is more appealing? What combination gives you a better chance of winning, winning a Super Bowl? Those are the kinds of conversations that are surely taking place within the organization for weeks. Absolutely they are. We're having that conversation. The media obviously is having a conversation. Everybody's having that conversation. But I think that um, almost all of those scenarios are... I mean, look, at the end of the day, all of those scenarios have some probability of success and some probability of failure. I think the more risk you take, I mean, there's no thinking about it. The more risk you take, the less probability of success there is. I mean, that's just how it works. It's that's, you know, risk assessment 101. Like it just that's anyway. So I, I mean, look. They're already on the path that they're already on. It's not yet written in stone whether what the Dolphins are going to do. You guys know what I think. I think that they are going going to trade up. I think it's going to be to the number one pick. I think it's. I think they're going to take Joe Burrow. I think they're going to miss out on some of those top talents at like offensive line. I think they're going to mishandle this draft. And then I don't think if there is a 2020 season at all, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, work out in the ways that they want. I think they're still going to have a subpar year. Um, you know, I, they're not going to make it to the playoffs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And but then even if they do, which I hope that they prove me wrong. I hope there's a 2020 season. I hope we clear up all of this nasty virus stuff. I don't think that's likely, but I hope we clear all that up and people stop dying. I hope that the 2020 season goes on, and I hope that they prove me wrong. Um, in my assertions that it's going to end up uh, backfiring and fail. Um, but they have to prove it before they get the credit for it. And the data would suggest that I will likely be right. Now, we will uh, for sure know what they do uh, soon in the draft. I mean, we are, today is the ninth. We are what, 12 days away from the draft. So it is literally right around a cor the corner, less than two weeks now. So. We won't have to wait much longer. They proved me correct in what they were going to do in the offseason, right? I mean, there were tons of people that were like, no, they're not going to be big spenders in free agency, even though Chris Greer literally said they were going to do that. And then because of that and several other factors, that's what I predicted as well. I predicted that they were not only going to be big spenders in free agency, but they were going to... Um, focus primarily on the defense and a little bit on the offensive line and then um they were going to overpay like drastically overpay some of these guys the most egregious is the byron jones one in my opinion but kyle van noy shaq lawson eric flowers all of those guys i believe are overpaid um so we'll see how it pans out. Anyway, that's what I got for you guys. I'm going to get up out of here. I hope you guys enjoy my videos and perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.